Welcome to our thought for the day. Today we're thinking about Peter's story and finding ourselves in it. But we're also looking at the way that with the best of intentions, we can end up working against God. We start in Caesarea Philippi, or that's in the north of Israel, and uh, Jesus begins to think about his journey towards the cross. The reading is from Matthew chapter 16, and it's very short, it's verses 21 to 23. In my Bible, it's headed, Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Hello. Two thoughts occurred to me as I reread this story. One of them is that I think Peter gets a bad press. Yes, he suffers from foot and mouth disease. Yes, he's impulsive. But that's his temperament. He's a tigger. And they're very few, but very precious in churches. Eugene Peterson calls him a breath of fresh air. He doesn't just file away the information, the teaching that Jesus gives him. He wants to act on it, test it out. And if he doesn't understand, he says so. He tells it like it is. Here, basically, after Jesus has said some really unpalatable things, he says, Peter says, don't be ridiculous, or the equivalent in Aramaic. That's why we can so easily identify with him. But Jesus didn't see him as the joker in the pack. And this is the second thing that struck me. Jesus valued Peter very highly. Peter isn't shown up very well in this passage, but it was only the previous recorded conversation Jesus had with him when Jesus told him that he was going to be the linchpin for the whole church. We need to remember that sometimes when we're looking at the way that Peter gets it wrong, as we do. There have been some famous double acts in comedy in the past. You could probably list them starting with Laurel and Hardy and working more recently. All of them pretty much worked to the same formula. One made a serious but misjudged comment and then the partner the funny one, would bring the house down with his witty response. Each time Peter says or does something a bit dodgy, Jesus uses it as a hook for an important bit of teaching. Have you noticed that? Jesus needed Peter, just as Morecambe needed Wise. Jesus knew Peter's heart. Yes, he got it wrong. And yes, in this passage, he was roundly told off. But Jesus knew that inside there was a theologian in Peter. He was later to write two pastoral letters crammed with theological insights. It's no accident either that in the previous verses to the one that we heard read, it was Peter who gets it. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus 
decided that Peter should be the linchpin of the church. So when Jesus tells him to get behind me, Satan, it's like a warning to Peter not to get too big for his boots. Otherwise, he could get in the way of the whole gospel story. As we discovered later in Peter's story, he hasn't completely got it yet. Like us, he needs to keep on learning. We're going to turn to prayer in a moment. Just one comment. Remember Paul saying, if we think we're standing firm, be careful we don't fall. And it's often when we think we're doing well, actually we need to re-examine ourselves and look at God again. So let's turn our thoughts to prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you are ever patient with us. We thank you that you know our failings, and yet you still want to work with us. We thank you, Lord, that we're only the beginning of what you want from us, and you will fashion us over time. So we pray for others too, Lord, in this time of trouble, of when Many people are bewildered by what's been happening. Lord, may they find you and the rocks that you put there, like Peter. May they find that they can depend on you and that you will pick them up when they fall. We pray too, Lord, for those that are having to care for many. How they reach out to them. Sustain them, Lord, in their efforts. Give them courage to go on. Thank you that Peter didn't give up. He kept going. Lord, give us that same sustained strength. We pray now, too, for those that we have lost. Uh, in this tragic time. We pray that those that need comforting will receive your comfort, even through us. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to be a strength to those that look for light in the darkness. We finish our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll see you again soon.